do my rooster call. The life of a turkey hunter. Sitting, and calling, and moving. And moving, calling, and sitting. For turkey hunters like Charles Coleman, the hunt is like a game. Just like Battleship, this time we're setting up on this side. The hunters are constantly moving around to find the turkeys. While the turkeys are moving around to find other turkeys. The game is trying to figure out where the birds are coming from. They normally come from this side. Where they're going to. Ooh, there's that hen. And how they're getting there. Straight through there. It's a method of hunting called patterning. We know where the roost are. We know where they come off. We know where they like to run. Uh, you know, sometimes during the day, we can go find the turkey on this piece of property just by knowing the time of the day and where they normally are. There are three subspecies of turkey in Texas, but finding them hasn't always been easy. The Miriam's turkey makes its home in the mountains of the Trans-Pecos region. The eastern wild turkey lives in the piney woods and post oaks of East Texas. By the early 1900s, habitat destruction had virtually wiped out both birds in the state. If you want to get rid of a species, the first thing you do is destroy its habitat, and it won't be there anymore. Today, extensive restocking of the eastern wild turkey and improved awareness of habitat management across the state have helped bring the birds back. The populations are on a gradual increase and probably will continue to be on a gradual increase over time. But uh, how quickly they increase and to what numbers they increase to is going to be completely dependent upon how we manage the landscape. The third turkey of Texas, and by far the most abundant, is the Rio Grande subspecies. The Rio Grande lives in a 400-mile-wide band of Texas brush country. The Rio Grande turkey population in Texas is, I think, commonly known as the healthiest, largest population of rear-grand turkeys on the planet. It's this bird that is bringing hunters and dollars to Texas from all across the country. And what we'll do is we'll put oh, We ought, might be able to catch him before he gets there, too. Yeah. Kevin Kirshner has driven 16 hours from his home in Iowa to hunt the Rio Grande turkey. His hunt here in Texas will last just three days, after which he'll have to head back home with or without a bird. We either need to set back up sort of kind of where we did. Kevin and host Charles Coleman are hunting the rolling pastures and woods of a 400-acre lease, an hour south of San Antonio. Actually, what we should do... He's going to want me to move. Watch. The turkeys roost at night along a creek to the east and cross through the field each morning and afternoon in search of food. There are a lot of birds in the area, but finding them amongst the mesquite, cactus, and cows is a different story. Well, you see all the shows where everybody shoots a turkey, and you think, wow, we're going to just go out there and set up underneath any tree and buy a call and just start yelping, and they're going to start coming out of the woods. Well, that's not quite the case. Prophetic words indeed. For the first afternoon's hunt, Charles set up along the east side of the pasture while Kevin headed to the south side. Use this call primarily as your first call, and then we can switch off to a small box call or a mouth call once they come in range. Only the birds didn't come in range probably a little too hot, and they're just not moving. Ooh, did you hear what I just heard? That was a gobbler back down in the creek bottom, guys. Let's go. By the time Charles made it to the creek, the bird 
Christmas. We're already on the roofs. They're not going to come out of there. So we're not going to get any closer. Go after them in the morning. We're just going to set up in the best place we can and, and uh, stake ourselves down so we don't blow away. That's old Mary Bell. That's been around for a long time. I've had that since I started turkey hunting about 13 years ago. Like, oh, I was probably eating my decoy. There they went. They didn't like Mary Bell at all. She stood her ground. After a couple of hours of watching the wind blow, Charles spotted turkeys way across the field on the west side. There they are. Let's go. So set up in that northwest corner. Let's go. As Charles and Kevin moved closer, the birds moved further away, eventually crossing the fence into the adjoining property. We should have set up in this northwest corner and but they're patterned now i mean we know where they're coming from so we'll set up we're going to set up there in the morning <laughs> we'll skip the afternoon hunt because well you kind of get the idea how this thing's going turkey, turkey with an itch and the last morning's hunt didn't start out too well either after patterning the birds for two days Charles and Kevin set up in the northwest corner of the pasture, where they were sure the birds were going to be. <laughs> Only the birds crossed behind them. So they moved the decoys one last time. Man, thought we had them patterned, thought we had everything figured out, and they just outsmarted again, you know? But then we knew there was a second group around, so we waited and waited, and we heard them gobble, and they come in, and everything worked out fine. You take your turkey. I killed two in one shot. <laughs> two in one shot, baby. <laughs> oh, it don't get any better. Kevin ended up with two gobblers out of a four bird limit, making the long trip from Iowa to Texas well worth the effort. I shot the middle one, and the one on the left decided to fall too, so it worked out. Beautiful birds. For Charles Coleman and Kevin Kirshner, patience, perseverance, and patterning proved to be the right moves when playing the turkey game. Yeah, it's kind of a game, and sometimes the turkeys win, sometimes we win. We uh, spent three days patterning the turkeys. We finally outsmarted them. I'm going to make this officially legal and put these tags on them. I tell you what, we all had a great time this weekend. Hunting Rio Grande turkeys in South Texas, it just can't be beat.
Step Annie Griffith had a fishing pole over her shoulder. <laughs> we got two dead turkeys. <laughs>